What is going on to all my boys fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again breaking down the third season episode for the boys which is titled Glorious Five Year Plan. An episode in which we see Starlight recruiting Supersonic to take down Homelander and oh yeah we're going to talk about how that works out for him. We see our boys finally make it to Russia and one of the members decides to take some V24. Victoria takes down her father and uh, by the end of this episode Homelander and reminds everyone exactly who's in charge. We'll be discussing that and so much more in today's spoiler review. Before we get into all the breakdown here, make sure you all are checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns, and live streams, well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you all enjoyed this spoiler discussion of the third season episode for The Boys, well make sure you're liking and sharing this review, but more importantly, sharing your thoughts on this very diabolical episode where we see what happens when you go against Homelander. Stan, no longer the CEO. What does that mean for Vought? Also, one of our members takes V24. I wonder who else is going to take it, if the boys are still going to be a group after what happens to Kamiko. And again, Homelander and this new leadership, what does it mean for the rest of the world is the question I have for you all. But let me know your pros, your cons, and of course your thoughts and theories of what you hope to see in the weeks ahead. With all that being said, let's get into the breakdown. Full spoilers ahead as we open in the episode in a very funny moment with soul gold time with special guest soldier boy and we get yet again another flashback of young mm and I'm, I'm i'm expecting us to get this flashback pretty soon like what exactly happened that night in regards to again i said it in my previous review i think mm lost his mom and you know we know the whole drug situation and and soldier boy taking down drug lords and whatnot i'm very curious on exactly what happened in this quote-unquote car crash if that was the case I'm expecting that next episode, but getting back into Huey here, who learns about the V24 that Billy's been taking, and we see Billy tells him, listen, Mike, you tell anyone I did this, I will put you in a coma, and uh, I mean, technically, you know, Huey didn't tell anyone, he just showed people what the V24 is, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's check in with Homelander, who's on the Carmen Coleman show, and he's continuing to preach into his audience about people being in control of him, and particularly how Vought is in control of him, and he's going to make a change about that in this episode, as we see Stan is watching this, and he's talking to Victoria, aka Nadia, and he tells her it's time to take down Homelander, even if it's against company policy, and Stan just wants to send him a message and let him know who's exactly is in charge, which again, there's a new boss in town by the name of Homelander. And it's in this moment too that we see that Stan is very confident in telling Victoria, aka Nadia, he's still afraid of me. I still have power over him. And he reassures her that, hey, I will keep you and your sister. I believe her name was... Um, Chloe or Zoe, I'm going to keep you protected. I've always kept you protected, right? Which is foreshadowing to what's going to happen a little bit later in the episode. But just rewind a little bit. I am so curious to know why exactly was it that Homelander, who admits in this episode that he was intimidated by a human being. There's something that Stan has that we just don't know about quite yet. And I can't wait to find out what exactly this power that, besides him being a CEO and controlling his, you know, image and all that stuff, there's something more deeper than that because we we know how, you know, the relationship he had with, um, you know, Stillwater and how he just was able to take her out so easily. So there's something else there with Homelander and Stan. I'm very excited to learn more about that. But as we get back into hashtag Homelight, we see Starlight's talking to Huey about the, obviously, the decision she made to uh, make it official that her and Homelander are a power couple as she kissed him last week. And she reminds Huey, hey, I, I have to do it. I have to do whatever it takes, like you told me. And it's within this conversation that Homelander just strolls on through in the middle of the conversation. And he's like, you know what, Huey, there's nothing to worry about here, buddy. This is just strict business, which, you know, now to come to think about it, me and Maeve were strictly business, and man, that got pretty freaky pretty quickly, which speaking of, how is Starlight in the bed, and we see him saying, oh, I'm just kidding, again, I love Homelander, not for what he does, I just love a good villain, as I mentioned in my previous reviews, and him just, you know, taking punches at everyone, and it's in this moment, one of many examples, 
what Huey does at the end of this episode, it's been building for the last three seasons, and he decides to no longer be bullied, and we'll talk about that later. But again, it's it's very interesting to see this dynamic and him just walking in and out and just knowing when to poke the bear, and it's, it's going to catch up to Homelander no time soon, but it's going to catch up eventually. But as we get to what's going on with A-Train in this episode, social justice going on for A-Train, as he wants to set up a talk between him and Blue Hawk, as we know Blue Hawk is going to different areas, urban areas, and doing some very despicable things. He wants to have that conversation, but first, we have to talk about this funny-ass, ridiculous commercial, Turbo Rush, which it's time to listen to one another. I thought that commercial was very funny, but taking the funniness away, I am very curious, and I talked about it last week when we heard about Blue Hawk and his brother saying, hey man, you gotta, you really want to be about that culture, you really want to show your blackness, you gotta speak up, you gotta make the voice list have a voice, so I'm curious on what the show is going to do with that A-Train plot, they've been leading slowly, hinting at this, and A-Train maybe stepping on the box and speaking up and using this platform to do so, I hope the show doesn't fumble that bag and they actually have something to say about that, right now it seems to be very sporadic and coming in and out but I hope they have a a, a you know a plot line that kind of adds to where they leading with with a train and we'll talk about a train a little bit later get into a little bit of a scuffle with the deep but let's check in with Maeve in this episode who's still preparing and prepping and training which she has been doing for the last four months just in case it comes to it where it's going to be her versus Homelander as she's telling Starlight listen I don't want anyone to be recruited I need to take him down this needs to be my solo mission you know I was the one that gave Billy the intel on the super weapon and I have to be the one that takes him down now I will say I'm a Maeve fan Queen Maeve all day because she's you know the Wonder Woman of the crew and that's one of my favorite superheroes of all time so she's been on the back burner this season yes she did give Billy the intel but she really hasn't been as as involved in the narrative and honestly most of the show hasn't really shown us Maeve in action so I hope that we get to see her kick some ass you know slowly leading up to Homelander I want to see her in action sooner rather than later I hope we get that soon but let's see what's going on back to Starlight as she recruits Supersonic and she tells him we want to take him down and he immediately no hesitation with it at all Yes, I'm going to join you. And he jokingly says, you know, because I love you. He's like, no, I'm not going to marry you. I'm not in love with you. I know you have a good relationship. And it was in this moment. I'm like, he's a good guy. But there's something. He has to be some undercover. There's going to be some big reveal going on with uh, Supersonic. And it came a lot sooner than I anticipated. He was actually a good guy, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But let's check in with this team meeting on the 7 as Homelander welcomes officially Super Sonic to the crew. And he wants him to fit in by ordering tacos. Like, uh, Homelander is just such a racist and just a terrible individual. As we see, A-Train takes this moment to bring up the Blue Hawk situation and leave it to the Deep's wife to give him some tips as we see him step in and, and give Homelander some points on speaking up to this by stopping Blue Hawk, you're going to end up messing up your points because you guys share a similar demographic. And Homelander's like, the Deep? What? I mean, you, you make a good point, but I mean, kudos to you, Deep, to everyone's surprise, because we know the Deep isn't the smartest individual, which obviously upsets, uh, you know, A-Train, which we'll get into that moment here. But I had to I had to bring up one of the funniest lines of this episode, and this is the PG-13 version of this particular quote that Homelander gives Ashley. He tells her, is your idiot brain getting screwed by the stupid? Again, I had to PG-13, you know, because it's, you know, YouTube. I don't want to use the actual words they use, as Homelander wants her to investigate on exactly what Victoria is going to be saying about him later in this uh, press conference which I think was in this moment, somewhere between him telling her that and then obviously the reveal I wonder when Homelander actually, did he already set this in motion, the whole turn that Victoria's going to have, or it was in this moment that he ended up having somehow, some way, got the message, heard what she was going to do, switched her over to the dark side. I wonder when exactly that conversation took place, but let me know your thoughts on all that in the comments. But let's talk about a, a quick little interesting scuffle here, which is A-Train versus the Deep, as they're exchanging secrets that they both have on Homelander, resulting to A-Train hitting and punching the deep and we see the deep throws him in the wall and Homelander has to step in but on a serious note which it was kind of cool to see them fight it was kind of a weak fight right but I'm very curious if it came down to it I'm talking about both of them in their prime they're both healthy they're both you know in the right state of mind 
who would really win that fight? Do you guys have A Train winning or do you have the Deep winning? Because it's essentially, if we're talking about, you know, I, I compared Mabe to Wonder Woman, this is the Flash versus Aquaman. I put my money on Aquaman. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me reverse that. I put my money on the Flash winning that actual fight if they came to blows. But in this context of the show, I think I'm going with the uh, the A Train that will win the fight. But that's just my thoughts. Who would you all think will win that fight? A Train in the deep, which I think this is foreshadowing because I think they're going to fight eventually because I think A Train will eventually go on their side. I'm referring to the boys and the B- Billy and Starlight, but. Who wins that fight? Let's have that discussion in the comments. But let's get back into it, which leads to Mr. Supersonic approaching A-Train, telling him to calm down. And this is where Supersonic takes upon himself to say, hey, man, I know you're upset with Homelander. There might be something to take him down. Are you in? And at that very moment, I said, man, you didn't effed up because A-Train clearly wants to get back in good graces with Homelander. He will use anything and everything to get back into his good graces. So I knew that at that moment, I'm like, dude, you're an idiot. It's going to get yourself killed. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But on this actual speech that Victoria has for the people, to not only my surprise, but Stan's surprise, she praises Homelander for coming up and speaking about the crimes that Stan has committed. And he is now under an investigation. The moment here where Nadia has the conversation with Stan, she tells him, there was never a time where you were protecting me. I've always been protecting you. But now it's more importantly that I protect my sister. Very powerful move there. And again, I did not see that coming I've always thought that Stan has always been 10 steps ahead which I still think there's something that Stan has over home that it is he's always rattling something up I don't think he's completely out of picture and we still have a scene to talk about here with him but let me know what you all think about that situation and how it's going to shape up with Victoria throwing her father essentially under the bus and what that can mean for Vought. Let's have those conversations in the comments. But quick little detour, you know, we got to talk about the sex toys because we get a, a big scene about sex toys later. But Ashley has another, a higher position in the company and she's using her power uh, in a particular scene here. But let's get back into Homelander who pays a visit to Nadia and they're working together now. He brings up the information that she, that he actually found in Stan's office about the Red River program and that she She's always been a weapon since she was a little girl, and he has another gift for her, a recipe. And, you know, Homelander gives her that, and he says, you know, I'm glad you chose us over them. But we're going to talk about that gift here because we see in the very next scene, Nadia goes to her sister's room, and, you know, she says, this is us now. We got to, you know, this is our home. This is our family. We got to do whatever we can to protect our family. And she gives her the gift that Homelander gave her and shoots it in her spine, which again, we we saw, you know, she could rip my spine out. So it seems like she has some powers, like very super strong, but she puts the, the, the recipe in her and I'm assuming whatever she put in her sister removes your powers or heightens your powers. I think it's more of removes your powers because she wants probably her sister to live like a normal life and not be used as a weapon like she was. I could be wrong, but let me know what you all think that gift was. Was it to remove her special abilities or is it to stabilize them, enhance them, maybe give her more control? Let me know your thoughts on this special gift. But let's go back to Homelander who has a conversation. He's black. He's just living in the glory of the destruction of Stan. And they're having a conversation where Homelander talks about He's not intimidated by Stan anymore. Again, what exactly was it that made you afraid of him? He's just a regular human being. At least that's what we know him to be. As we see, Stan reminds him exactly that you're going to miss me. And I'm not worried about you, Homelander. And you're essentially just a very bad product. And he walks out. I thought for a split second that there's no way you're about to walk out of the room after embarrassing. I, I know there was no one around. But we know Homelander doesn't just allow people to say things about him without him knowing, uh, letting him do, you know, the Homelander thing which is killing them so again what is it that stan has over him besides mind control which might be a special power of his i don't know let me know what you all thought about that whole plot but let's check in what's going on with the boys in this episode as they are in russia in class as we see billy cuts a deal with nadia as they're flying on a private jet to russia we see that the russians aren't a fan of the boys whatsoever we see this with all the different graffiti all around the place as they have arrived and they have a job to do first as nadia wants to 
them to kill this one particular guy. And it ain't a boy's mission. It's a Kamiko mission, as we see that Billy wants her to take out this particular individual. And Billy also reminds them exactly who the boss is. And we're starting to see that rift. And it's been building so far this season that Kamiko and Frenchie want to do their own thing. They had to bring Huey back. They had to bring MM back. But just it seems to be temporarily because the cracks in the group is starting to show. But a scene I wanted to kind of highlight here, and I really kind of cherish this moment between Billy and M.M. as he's telling him who the real leader of the group is, which is M.M. A very good moment with those two characters. I love when those two characters have like a heart to heart. You can tell that there's care, there's friendship, there's love between the two, but uh, the love doesn't last too much longer when we talk about what's going to happen at the end of this episode. But the mission with Kamiko as she's all dolled up, get the wild moment where she is on the eye with the women and he opens up his 50 shades of the seven sex toys. She ultimately uses one of the toys, kills him with the, <laughs> with the Homelander toy. She kills the, the one soldier with the toy and is vibrating in his neck in a very hilarious moment. But in all seriousness, this is the character moment with Kamiko. She does not want to be a monster. She doesn't want to be viewed as a weapon as the girls are scared of her. They're afraid of her. And this is just a continuing plot again as we know that she no longer wants to be viewed in that light. She wants to have a somewhat of a normal life and she doesn't want to be seen in this light. And we even pair that with the conversation she has with Frenchie in this episode where it's you and me they eventually want to move on with their life and live a happy life and and again i've seen so many movies and shows when characters say we got one more mission we're going to do this as frenchie says for huey and mm and then we're going to move on with our lives i'm like dude you just gave yourself a death wish and we're going to talk about that a little bit later is kamiko going to die i hope not because i love that character but i think eventually if it's not by next week by kamiko they're going to find i think she's going to be okay we'll talk about that scene later but i think inevitably by the end of the season more so, I, I put my money on Frenchie not lasting and in going into the next season. Let me know your thoughts on that. But as we cut to Billy taking more of the V24 in preparation just in case something goes wrong, he calls it a contingency plan, and this is where Huey walks in, and he wants to take the V24. But as a good kind of mentor, as Billy, as a big brother in their relationship, he tells him, no, I'm not going to allow you to go down this path. And uh, as little brothers do, they find their way into the cookie jar. And we'll talk about that here as we transition to the second main mission of Soldier Boy. We see M.M. knocking out the Russian soldiers. And I love when he was knocking them out, throwing in movie references like Red Dawn and <laughs> Rocky IV. M.M. is so damn good. I love that character so much. But we see them coming across this hamster by the name of Jamie who sets off the alarms. And we see Jamie tacking one of the soldiers, eating them. But this is when the moment happens. All the bullets are gone. You know, our team is looking bad. And it's time for Billy Butcher, my guy, to show off his new party trick in front of the boys. As his eyes are glowing, his uh, secret's out of the bag now. And he kills the soldiers. And we see M.M.'s about to get killed. And in comes the big surprise. I knew this was going to happen eventually, but I didn't expect it so soon. As I mentioned, little brother sticks his hand in the cookie jar. Huey takes the, V20, the V24 and it Appears. His superpowers are to reappear, disappear, and he has super strength as he punches the, the guy through the chest. And he is loving this because, again, we all know this whole the whole show, but this season two, he's always been the bullied one, right? He's always been the one that has to be saved by Billy or M.M. or Frenchie or, you know, Starlight. But now he can stand up for himself because he's taking the V24. We see him in this moment. He's like, ah, oh, excited. And everyone's very disappointed in him. But I don't know if this power that Huey has now, I think it's going to get to him. But we go into the moment here where they actually open the place where Soldier Boy's been kept. And I love the tension in the scene where he's like walking out of it. It was very kind of like terminator meets winter soldier vibes as we see ultimately he doesn't know who any of these people are i love how billy was like all right bro if you if you get you know you jump we're gonna go ahead and get on but you know frenchie he's looking at frenchie he, he's starting to build up his chest and makes this cosmic blast come out of his chest which he lets it out kamiko steps in front of frenchie but unfortunately she's not healing she's actually dying which we kind of you know wrap up this particular plot with billy and you know mm saying i'm no longer gonna be a part of this group especially if she dies which brings me to the question whatever the russians were doing on soldier boy for the last 30 plus years 
whatever this blast is, it seems to be able to take away your abilities and your powers to heal. And if we're assuming that, I don't think she's going to die no time soon. I, again, I think if anyone are going to die between that dynamic, I think it's Frenchie. But right now, if we're able to convince Soldier Boy to help us take out Homelander, could you all imagine a world in which Homelander loses his superpowers, even if it's temporary? Ooh, that would be something interesting there. But again, I think Kamiko's fine. Right now, they're allowed, they're thinking, we're thinking she's going to die. I don't think she's going to die, but let me know what you all think about that. And also, that blast, can it take away your abilities? And it does it have any ties to the secret recipe that Nadia gave her younger sister? Let me know your thoughts on all that. And if there's some type of conspiracy where the Russians and Americans are working together, Let's speculate about that in the comment section. But let's wrap up the episode as Homelander wants to show Starlight his very special, beautiful spot on top of the roof. And that special spot is a dead supersonic. I knew it was eventually going to come to fruition as A-Train spilled the beans. And at this moment, we see that there are no more plotting. There will be no more games. You're going to worship me and only me. And it won't be any different. And the next time you do something like this, that's going to be Huey. As a matter of fact, I want you to say it out loud as she tells him that it will be Huey and he makes her find a way home. End of the episode, Homelander, he, he, he's 10 steps ahead, right? He kills Supersonic, which I was not expecting that. I, I knew eventually it was going to lead to something. Again, I was more like, man, this dude just seems too nice to be true. Is he snitching? Is he working with Homelander? Well, he was a good guy, and he didn't last long. And again, the big moment in this scene, obviously, besides him dying, Homelander's in full control. He is running Vought now. Ashley has a new position. Again, I'm so curious on, with Stan being out of the picture, there has to be someone higher than Stan. And if there is someone, like a board, as they mentioned, I wonder who's on that board and who really kind of controls all the strings. And again, what is it that Stan has over Homelander is my big question. But again, at least for now, Homelander is running things with a very iron fist. And again, speaking of iron fist, going back to Russia, I think Kamiko is going to be fine. But if it's so be that she dies, that would be very surprising, especially this early on in the season. But again, that, that blast that Soldier Boy has... Can it take away your abilities? Does that tie to the recipe that Nadia gave her younger sister of either enhancing or taking away the superpowers and all the different stuff that we have with A-Train, the deep and the social justice things that we got going on with A-Train and Soldier Boy, MM Connections, and are the boys slowly but surely breaking up? <sighs> this show is so fantastic. I really enjoyed the narrative. I love this whole connection of showing power we talked about control and the broken ones and right now homelander is on a whole nother level but will our team be able to take him down we're mave we're starlight we're huey with his new superpowers billy mm and will the rest of the boys take their uh v24 i can't wait to find out but i really enjoyed this narrative i enjoyed this episode but i want to know your thoughts your pros your cons favorite moments least favorite moments and of course your thoughts and theories of what you all hope to see in next week's episode of the boys i'll be back breaking down episode five right after the episode ends and again thank you all for the support if you haven't already make sure before you leave that you like the review share the review leave your thoughts in the comments and of course subscribe to the channel come and join the boys over here and hit that notification boy that way you don't miss any of my future reviews thank you again hope you're staying safe come and join the community check out my other boys reviews check out my most recent review and we'll catch you all on the next breakdown